Here we have a Dyson high torque head that comes with your Dyson V11 or Dyson V10 depending where you live. So first we need to remove the wheels to disassemble this. After you remove the screwdriver, there's a cap and the wheel itself. So the wheel actually has two parts. So here's the cap. Next, the wheel. If this is the first time you removed it, the wheel is a bit tough to remove. But just give it some force and pull it out or come out. We need to remove both sides. And I'm just showing you how to put it back in. It just slides back in the way you take it out. Remember to place your screws properly so you remember which screw goes where. So as you can see here, my wheel is a bit difficult to remove. Just have to put a bit more force in it and it'll come out. After you remove the wheels, there's two screws on both sides. You'll need a torque screwdriver to remove these screws. These screws are a bit difficult to remove and hard, so if you have a bigger screwdriver, it's better. Just to show you the screw, the screw is a lot bigger than the other screws. Now that we removed the two screws, we need to remove this screw here. This screw here has a sticker over it, so you it's the warranty void sticker. You need to remove that before you can remove the screw. So as you can see here, after you remove the screw, you can pull it back and forward. It creates a gap when you pull it back and when you push it forward. You need to do this by pushing, you need to push it back so you can remove the next part. So the next part we're going to remove is the center core. So go to the side, get a coin. You can rotate it. As you can see, you rotate it anti-clockwise. And after you rotate it anti-clockwise, you can pull the whole thing out. So this cap here is just a cap. You can take it out and put it back in. It only goes in one direction. As you can see here, one side has something and one side has nothing. So the nothing side goes in deeper. And I'm just gonna show you how you can't go in the opposite way. Next, we're going to need to remove this rubber part. So to remove the rubber part, you need to remove these two screws. These two screws are your Philip head screwdriver. So after you remove the two screws, you where the screw comes out, you can pull it up or pull the rubber back and it will come off. So these things here slide off and the inner side has to go in first, diagonally, before you can put the other side in. So you lift up the screwdriver hole part first. When you put it in, you put in the other side first. So, uh, <laughs> so for both sides, you can actually remove these plastic things they actually slide on there's like rails here so here there's a gap where your rubber rail part slides in and you need to put the end closer to the center in first before you put the outside in next we need to peel back the rubber so behind the rubber there's four screws
So once you have removed the four screws, this piece just comes off. So to put it back, you there's actually guides that you need to put in first. So this part here slides on, and after it slides on, then you can peel it back. You can put back your four screws to. Next, we need to remove these four screws. So two of the screws are on the head and the other two screws are on the neck. So as you can see on the side, I'm putting the screws in separate stages or separately. And for each stage is what screw I used or what screw came out. So when I reverse this process, I go down, go down or go up. So after we remove that, there's another screw inside. So it's inside there, you might not be able to see it in the video, but if you have the head in front of you, you'll be able to find it. Now that we remove that, we can now remove this piece here. So to remove this this long piece here, you can actually you just need to push it out ish and wiggle it a bit. Sometimes this is easy to remove, sometimes it's really difficult. As you can see here, I have difficulty removing the left hand side, but the right hand side came off really easily. So here, after you remove it, you get this. To put it back in, remember to slide your neck up, and there's two guides here that needs to go in. So it slides in that direction. Remember to remove your uh, neck back and be careful of the cable. So it's easier if you put one side in first or partially in and then put the other side in. As the center has no clips or attachment. So as you can see here, I put in one side first. I just have a bit of dust in the way and then you can attend to the middle the neck so you need to slide the back uh, the neck back and forward I'm just flipping around so you can see so this is getting difficult I use a screwdriver to pry it open which doesn't really help much this is uh, actually about technique, not. So if you have your technique correctly, it comes off pretty easily. So the technique seems to be um, if you lift up the center, you can get them out. So next we need to remove four screws. These four screws is to give you access uh, to remove the front um, cage thing. 
your gates, that's what they call it. Now that you removed your four screws, we need to flip it over. You just need to lift this up. So with lifting up and wiggling it a bit, it comes off pretty easily. So these here are the gates. They actually come off. So just to put your gate back, this is this there's two notches here. Each notch needs to go into those gaps. And once the notch goes into that gap, remember to push it towards the center as that's where it's meant to go. There's also this clip on um, this groove on the bottom. So you need to put the groove uh, uh, underneath us then put the notches in so remember to move your not uh, your gate towards the center and align it with the holes on the vacuum once they are aligned you can push it against the vacuum and slide it down and it should go into place so to remove it just lift it up Push it, lift it up and push it against the vacuum and it comes off. So you can use the vacuum curve as a guide and going that direction seems to work really well. So I'm just going to show you how to put it back in. So we're going to put the arc upwards it doesn't work the opposite way that's basically it so next we need to remove the wire and just lift it up so you need to remove this plastic shroud just lift it up and it should come off So to put the plastic shower back on, push your wire back, align the curves, remember to move your neck, you can take it off, but it needs to be aligned correctly. So once it's aligned, it should go in. Also be wary of the neck, as if that's not aligned, it doesn't fit in properly. After that, there's grooves here. You put one white cable and one black cable in each groove, and you press down on the black knob. So. Just to show you, you can actually remove the black seal, but I recommend you not to remove it. I removed mine, and I could not put it back in properly. If you really want to clean it, you can remove it, but it's not recommended, as you probably won't be able to return it. So next, we want to remove the neck and the motor. So after you remove the plastic clear cover top, it just comes off and the neck only goes in one way remember to pull the neck cover back before you put it on or it blocks the way
So just follow the cable. We want to move, remove the cable gently so you don't rip it. So to remove this, you just lift it up. And to put it back in, you need to put the corner back in first. So there's a rubber piece. I recommend you put the rubber piece in first and then put the motor in next. This is a bit difficult, so make sure you look at it first before you remove it. So you put in the rubber piece first. After you put in the rubber piece, then you align the motor to go in correctly. So to align the motor to go in correctly, you have to put it diagonally, as you saw. I'm just going to rotate it around and show you again. So this rubber piece goes in here first. And then move your motor diagonally to put the notch in the hole. So next I'm going to show you how to remove the wheels. You can remove the wheels from outside, which you don't have to disassemble it, or you can remove the wheels from the inside. Inside is a lot easier. So you need to find the middle rod of the wheels, which is, if you're looking at the wheel, you need to push out the rod from the center, the side of the wheel that's in the center, you'll be able to see the middle rod. So you need to push the middle rod out. As you see, I'm having a bit of a hard time pushing it out as it's not working. Later on, you'll see that I actually got a hammer to knock it out as I haven't cleaned this for a while and it's a bit difficult to remove. So you can remove it from this side as well. I have done it before with my pre previous vacuum cleaner heads. But for this case, I'm unable to remove it as um, it's stuck. So just ignore this part and um, move forward onto the hammering part later on in the video. So we go back to the neck and the motor. There's actually two screws here that you can remove. There's actually no point of removing these two screws, but since this is, is a disassembly video, I'll show you. If this is your unit, I do not recommend you to remove this, and it's just it's just a waste of time. So now that you remove it, you can just take it out, and it comes off. You need to unroute unroute your wires. So it can slide freely. There's also a seal on this. So unwrapping your wires, you have to lift up the seal a bit. That's why I don't recommend you guys to remove the screws or go towards this part, as this does nothing. So that's about it. So now to put it back, remember to align 
your screw holes correctly. There are screw holes on the part that with the slides and there's screw holes on the motor. So if you don't align it correctly, you realize that your screw you can't screw back in your screws that we just removed. So remember to check the hole and see if the screw holes align. And then reroute your cable again and place your seal back on. So try not to get your hands dirty because the seal is double sided stick tape and if you put dirt on it, it doesn't seal properly. So, so this is how you remove the wheels. It was so hard for me to push out that I had to get a hammer to knock it out. Normally this is not the case. I've done this with my other vacuum cleaning heads from Dyson and it wasn't that difficult. It's probably that I haven't cleaned this for so long. That's why it's difficult for me to remove. So the idea is you need to put your screwdriver in and make this uh, steel rod stick out. So you actually cannot pry it out, just to tell you. So you have to take the make the steel rod stick out a bit. Then you have to drag the steel rod out diagonally. So what I'm trying to achieve is I'm trying to lift it up enough so I am, I am able to pull the steel rod out. Since this is um, hasn't been cleaned so well, it's a bit stuck and it's a bit difficult. If you keep on watching, you can see that um, slowly after time that I was able with it diagonally, I was able to drag it out with my fingers. So you want it at 30 degrees, 30 to 45 degrees. 45 degrees is a bit too much. If you push it too much, it doesn't come out as it gets wedged as you can see there I have pulled out the steel rod and now the wheel falls out and to put it back in you actually need to put it back in diagonally and you have to put the rod through the wheel and then um, through the wheel and then through the hole and you can push the steel rod back down with uh, your screwdriver as you can see I'm doing Please note, if you haven't done is this, if this is the first time you've done it, it might be extremely difficult. So that's basically it. So this is about the end, and here is the reassembly. So this is what happens after I clean it. I will not be narrating the rest of the video, so you can watch it. And good luck, and thanks for your time.